Now I am going to be camping only using this axe, but uh, I want my boys to actually have a good time and want to come back with me. So I got them some bed rolls and uh, some, some basic supplies. So they're going to have a little bit uh, more luxury and comfort on this trip. And uh, while I, I rough it a bit. You like your bed roll, Tom? It's going to drop 20, 30 degrees tonight and get a little bit windy. So we really better get a shelter or it's going to be a very, very cold night, especially since I don't have a bag or a bed roll or any of that. All right, let me show you my survival axe. It's a Fiskar axe with a 36 inch handle. I'll put a link in the description. And I've wrapped the handle in about 100 feet of paracord using a chain sinnet knot. It's nice and ergonomic, looks good. And then you can just go and pull the string and quick deploy all the uh, paracord out if you need. I've also wrapped about a couple hundred feet of really high quality fishing line around the handle here. Inside the handle, I've stored a few goodies as well. Yeah, so there's a little string here. Pull the string. Oh, hold on. <laughs> All right, so let me show you what I had stored in the handle of the ax. Got a flint and steel, a fishing lead, and I've got a bunch of snelled fishing hooks. Got some cotton balls for starting fires. I've got three packets of this chloroflock, a chemical you put in water to chlorinate it. And then I've got a slightly chewed up, banged up uh, space blanket here. So using just the supplies that were inside my ax handle, I'm gonna try to find some food and camp for the night. All right. All right, buddy, here's your canteen. And you see, so this is an, like an army canteen, and this is a pot for cooking. So in your bedroll, you've got hand warmers, canteen, a pot, two flashlights, and a little extra water. So I got stuff for baked potatoes, ramen noodles, steak, and your coat. Don't spill it because we need it to survive. Let's see. I think this, oh. yeah, I think this is where I'm going to sleep tonight. Now the weather's not too bad today. It's just the wind. Cold wind is just gonna kill us. So this shelter, all it's really doing is just keeping us out of the wind. It's a pretty decent windbreak. All right, we're gonna add the chloroflock here.
You can see the Chloroflox done its trick. There's little piles of sediment and goobers on the bottom. It not only does it chlorinate and, and protect the water from viruses, but it makes a lot of the solids flocculate or become solids and sink to the bottom. So it makes it a little cleaner and tastes better too. Oh, I'm so thirsty, that tastes so good. Whoo, oh, that tasted good, I needed that water. Well, I'm hoping I can catch some fish for my dinner tonight, but first I'm gonna need some bait. So let's, look, there we go. Yeah, look at that. That's some good bait right there. Let me see the worms. We're gonna take, we're gonna take some of this dirt. And here, why don't you, yeah, there's the worms. Some of them are stuck in my boot. Some of them got in your boot? Take your, yes, there are worms in your boot. All right, we got the worms in a plastic bag. I've got to go and seal this up and put it somewhere cold and damp or they're going to die. All right. That's all the fishing line. So I've got a two-aught circle hook and a two-ounce sliding lead here. Throw some worms on this, it'll be perfect for catfish. Catfish? Or worms. Well, there we go. I got a bunch of worms on the catfish hook. Let's see if we can catch something. Well, this is as good a spot as any, but I really just don't want to snag up my line. I, if I snag up my line, that's it. I lose all my fishing gear. Sure hope I don't put this in the trees. <laughs> just snapped. Just like that. Holy crap. Well, losing that hook was a bit of a kick in the stomach. Uh, it looks like I'm gonna be going vegan tonight. But uh, if it was a little later in the year and the bluegill were in the shallows, I would make a fish gouge, which is like a little wooden sliver that you use like a fishing hook. And I've used those in the past, but the bluegill aren't here. So I'm gonna have to forge my way out of this problem. Hey guys, here's something right here. Right here. See? What? See these long leaves right here? Yeah. All right, so this is field garlic right here. It looks just like chives or garlic stems, but smaller. And you can't miss it. The smell is just like garlic. Very hard to get wrong and it's delicious. And this will go perfect on Tommy's baked potatoes tonight. So we're gonna gather up a bunch of this. Let's see if we can find some more field garlic. Look at that. Oh good, oh good. Well, I'll get it off you. Well, I found tons of it. Yeah, look at that. I Got the whole thing. Well, dig it up, try to get the whole plant. No. <sighs> there we go, that's a big one. Yeah, I'm picking the garlic. Oh, I, found, I found a white part, I found... You go and pull those apart? Tommy, that is a pile of garlic you got. Show me your garlic. <laughs> Look at that. Put them in there. Wash it off. Wash it off. And you're gonna, you might need to change your water a couple times. Oh, look at that pile of, pile of garlic right there. I need some tubers, something of substance. I can't just eat leaves. I need like roots. So we're gonna look for arrow arum. Okay, what we're looking for is the tuber of a plant called arrow arum. The leaves are mildly toxic like poison ivy. However, the tubers are edible. So we're gonna find arrow arum tubers. And arrow arum is a marshy plant that lives right on the edge of the water. You can see the water is a little bit low right now. And you'll see green shoots coming up, aha, right here. Okay, this right here are the shoots of the arrow arum just beginning to sprout. So there's tubers down there. All right, guys, ready to dig those up? Yeah. Oh, Daddy, Daddy, I made it. Oh. oh, I broke it off. I broke off part of it. You can see there, there's part of the tube. It's not your sword. It's not your sword. Oh, there we go. I found dinner. We'll take these and let's go get some more. There's some right here. Oh, oh. oh, that's a big one. 
Oh, I got you now. Oh, oh. Look at that behemoth. I did it. Oh. 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 You ready to head back and start cooking some dinner? No, I want to be done. It's so warm. <laughs> what, you guys make your own fort? Yeah. Because, Let me see it. Me... Yeah, because it was so cold, we, we built a fort and both of us could actually be in there. You know, that's actually really slick because the tree's on the wind side. So, man, that'll actually work pretty good if you guys got lost in the woods. It was an escape hatch. An escape hatch. Oh. All right, guys. There we go. I have never worked so hard for a vegetable in my life. Oh, I love hanging out with you. I love hanging out with you more. Oh, I've got so much mud and grime underneath my fingernails. My fingernails just hurt so bad. Ugh. There's so many unknown things about eating these wild vegetables. I know the tuber's edible. I know the green part's poisonous. Where does the edible part stop and the poison part begin? I don't know. We're going to find out. The other thing, am I allergic to this? Who knows? I may have a super freaky reaction to this. I have no clue. We're going to find out. It's, uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this, honestly. You know, I'm working so hard for this and it's not like it's Krispy Kreme donuts, you know. <laughs> it's, just, it's not the best tasting thing in the world, you know. Ugh. Now I gotta wash my GoPro. Well, there we go. That is the fruit of my labors and it's uh, a lot more tubers than I actually thought there were gonna be. All right, there we go. Kind of cleaned up. Ugh. There's one. Doing this with a potato peeler or even a pocket knife would be so much easier. Hold as many of these tubers as you can, okay? That's a yeah. Back to the camp. Oh. Take that back to the camp, lay it on your blanket. Yeah, cotton balls. They like to burn. Nathan, what's the matter with your hands? No, it's these ones are too. <laughs> Here, take the mud, rub it back and forth in between your fingers like so. Okay. Now wash your hands. Wash them really good. Scrub them, scrub, scrub, scrub. I'm done. Okay. Well, I had Nathan grab some of those tubers and help me haul them back to the, the fireside. And a few minutes later, he started complaining that his hands were itching. So he's definitely having a reaction to these tubers. So. That's kind of the danger of eating these wild foods, man. You don't know how you're going to react. You know, my hands are doing okay, but you know, we might want to be real careful before we eat these. Your hands feeling better? Yeah. A little washing them with mud seemed to help, didn't it? Yeah, my hands are really muddy. <laughs> mud! <laughs> Is that your pocket knife from Scotland? Yeah. So what are we doing? You making a stick? Yeah. To go and cook your meat? Yeah. I'm going to put a little pressure and push it away from you. Well, my space blanket's gonna be very useful tonight, so I better drink my fill, dry it off, and uh, get ready to use it tonight. The clove flock has done really well. All the dirt that's settled down in the bottom, it's really clean water now. These blankets are so useful. They can be used as heat reflectors, tarps to keep the rain off, or something to keep you warm. But I gotta dry mine off if it's gonna do any good tonight. You guys hungry? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I bet you are. It's been a long day. Okay, you ready for some steak? Yeah. Okay, get some I salt on it. A little pepper. I'm really hungry. 
We got a bunch of baked potatoes for you guys. We're gonna go ahead and cook those up. I don't know which one. Ooh. You loving your cup of noodle? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Yep, that's good. <gasps> it's ready, buddy. Let's see, watch this. Can we shave off a piece? Is that good, buddy? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, Enjoy your food. Don't mind me, guys. I'll just sit over here with my tubers and you enjoy your steak. That is done, Tom. You try that out. I love you. I love you too, bud. But you take a baked potato and you shove it under your coat. They keep you warm, and then once it cools down, then you eat it. <laughs> there you go. Okay, yeah, we're gonna put a hand warmer right there. Oh. Then uh, up against you. You guys warm so far? Yeah. You know, those tubers make me nervous. There's a lot of unknowns about eating wild food like this. So I'm gonna boil it really good uh, before I eat it and see if that doesn't help a little bit. And to do that, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and steal uh, Nathan's pot. So it's my one cheat so far. All right, well, I boiled the tar out of it and it looks kind of like taro root. really is the consistency of boiled taro root. You know, if you've ever had poi over in Hawaii or something, it's kinda, kinda looks like that. All right guys, moment of truth. Hoping I boiled all the poison out of this thing. And if I didn't, I'll know about it real quick cause uh, it doesn't take very long for your mouth to start burning if you bite into the leaves or stem of this plant. But uh, all right, let's give it a go. Might be edible, but it's not delicious. So I am going to go ahead and crush up these garlic bulbs and put it in there so I can get a little bit of flavor in this thing. Little campfire grit for texture, little garlic for flavor. Man, I liked what the boys were eating better. <laughs> Well, I'm eating it, but it's like eating a glue stick with a hint of garlic. Not, it's not very pleasant. And um, every once in a while, there's just this little tinge of something on the back of my tongue, a little weirdness there. It's like uh, there's a few uncooked pieces floating around in there. This is definitely a survival food, not a food you eat for fun. Well, I ate it and it wasn't great, uh, but there's definitely kind of a weird burning aftertaste kind of like if you've eaten something really spicy a while ago and there's just kind of that lingering burn in your mouth it's not bad but it's just kind of there i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend eating this outside of a survival situation and you never know what eating the large quantities of it will do to you so i think a few mouthfuls is about all i'm gonna do i'm gonna go to bed hungry tonight <laughs> well this spider just jumped on my hand i don't know where he came from come on nope nope come on Shoo, 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 shoo. My socks are so wet, so I'm barefoot right now, and I really think that's gonna make things uh, unpleasant. But we're gonna keep this fire going slow and low, and, and just, uh, I think we'll be okay. Well, it's about one in the morning, and it's gotten a little cold out. But this space blanket's actually helping a lot. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna stoke the fire and try to get some more sleep. Bye. 
morning. Well, the sun's about to rise. It's a little before seven in the morning. Good morning, guys. How'd you sleep? Okay. Nathan, you amaze me how well you sleep in cold weather. Like, I can't t count how many times Tommy stole the blanket from Nathan and he was just sitting there with no blanket snoozing away. <laughs> well, guys, did you have fun? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we did. So we're gonna get the fire out. We're gonna roll up our bed rolls and uh, we're gonna get headed home. Remember that? There we go. You ready to break down the fort? Yeah. Put it all back the way we found it. Time to go home. You guys ready to see mama? Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited to see mama too. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see other great videos every Saturday morning. Hit that bell button and you'll get notifications. Thanks for watching.